Here we begin the section entitled Programming the Model-Free Environment Using Monte Carlo and Q-Learning. In this section, we'll take a quick look at Monte Carlo methods, which are model-free. Then we'll look at in our example using the Monte Carlo method. Then we'll examine how Q-Learning works, what is the Q-Learning approach, and we'll illustrate that with an R example. We'll continue to discuss Q-Learning beyond that with another R example that introduces some stochasticity or randomness in your action selection. And then finally, we'll quickly review SARSA, which is the State Action Reward State Action Approach, which is also model free. So let's take a look at Monte Carlo methods. And in this video, that's what we'll do. We'll quickly describe what Monte Carlo methods are, and then we'll illustrate with an R example. Monte Carlo methods are not new. They are basically resampling methods. In the case of reinforcement learning, you resample the state action reward observations over and over again until the average best rewards converge to some optimal policy. Monte Carlo resampling methods are simple, but sometimes they are computationally expensive and they are slow to converge to an optimal solution. Monte Carlo methods don't require any knowledge of transition probabilities. Instead, they estimate learning problem solutions from observing a sequence of somewhat random state action reward interactions. They are mostly random with the exception of using the so-called epsilon greedy action selection strategy. With epsilon greedy, one exploits the average reward values that result from taking an action in a state by way of the state action value Q function, as opposed to using the state value V function that we used in the model-based approaches. By storing average rewards in a state action table, one can determine the best action to take in any particular state. For example, in this simple example, we have observed three sets of actions taken in three states. If we're in state S1, we would take action A1 because it has the highest reward, three, as opposed to two. If we were in state S2, we would take action A2 because based on our observations, we know that A2 has a reward of four. If we were in state S3, we would take action A1 because we have observed through Monte Carlo resampling that it has a higher reward, and so forth. With Monte Carlo methods, you begin with an arbitrary state action table that has the Q values. And one way to do it is to just set all the initial rewards to zero. You can also set them to other numbers. Then you, you observe a state, choose an action, and observe the reward. You randomly choose a state, and you can randomly choose an action, but with the epsilon greedy action selection strategy, you will only randomly choose an action a small percentage of the time, say 10%. 90% of the time, when you're placed in a state, you'll choose the action that you already know to have the highest reward. Then you update the state action table with the updated average reward, and you repeat this process over and over again, observing states choosing actions, and observing the reward. The epsilon control parameter determines the relative proportion of selecting a random action given a state versus selecting the highest known rewarding action given a state. If we set epsilon to 0.1, which is common, the algorithm then will choose a random action given state st 10% of the time, but will choose the best action, a so-called greedy action, 90% of the time. Thus, it's exploiting its existing knowledge 90% of the time to find the best average rewards and policy. But in order to do this, you have to have some existing knowledge of the state action reward relationships to begin with. So let's revisit our previous race to goal R example, where we have 20 states. The rewards in all states are zero, except for S10 that has a negative reward of minus 10, and S12 that has a positive reward of plus 10. The idea is to race from state S0 to S12. You can go up, down, left, or right. We did this previously, 
but we had no knowledge of the best actions to take in every state. So we used a random action selection strategy. Now we're going to do it using the Epsilon Greedy action selection strategy where we exploit our existing knowledge about what is the best action to take in any state to get the highest reward. So here we are in R. We've already done this top part. We, we are using the reinforcement learning package. And here's our elaborate race environment function where we, we define all the possible states, actions, and rewards. And we said there are 20 states and four actions. We've done all this. We set the seed and we sampled. Initially, we sampled 1,000. And then we set our control parameters for alpha, the learning rate, gamma, the discount factor, and epsilon, which determines epsilon greedy. Now, the epsilon control factor only comes into play when you are trying to exploit existing knowledge. If you are just setting up the model the first time and collecting data for the first time, the, the value that you set on this control parameter has no bearing whatsoever. Okay, so we did all this and we got our race model and we looked at the results. Okay, so we found an initial data set and a policy. Now we're going to do it again. We're going to use the same model, but we're going to resample data using Epsilon Greedy. Okay, so we use the same control parameters. Let's do that. And we set our seed. Let's do that. And here we resample the data 5,000 times, but we are specifically using the Epsilon Greedy action selection strategy. So let's do that. And it takes a little while. This is a disadvantage of the Monte Carlo approach. It tends to be computationally expensive. Now when we look at the first 250 records, let me spread it out a little bit so you can see it better. You'll note that there are a lot more positive rewards. Now most states have a reward of zero, so you'll see zero in all of those. But you recall that the minus 10 state had three different ways to get to it, and the plus 10 state only had two ways. So if you're randomly selecting actions when you end up in a state, it stands to reason you're going to get a lot more minus 10s than you are going to get plus 10s. But with the Epsilon Greedy action selection strategy, you deliberately choose the best action. So consequently, you're going to get more plus 10s because you're exploiting the knowledge of how to move into the plus 10 state when you're in a previous state where you can get to it. Okay, so what this will do, as we'll see in the Q table, it will drive up the, the average Q values for taking an action when you're in an existing state. So let's do our learning now. We have our new data. And note in the reinforcement learning algorithm, we're using the existing model, but we're using it with the new data that was selected using Epsilon Greedy. So we do that. And let's print it so you can see the model. Now, it's easier to understand what's going on when you look at it in a slide, and we'll do that in a moment. But notice the numbers are higher. You may or may not recall, when we did this randomly, these Q values in the state action table were generally of a lower magnitude. So, and that stands to reason. You're selecting actions that you know have a higher reward, so the average rewards will be driven up given whatever state you're in, whatever action you take. That's what it does. Now, one other thing we can look at quickly. Notice that the, the average reward went way up. I believe it was minus 470 when we randomly selected actions. The total reward is 4,410. Okay, so let's finish with R quickly so we can get a summary of this. And there were only two learning iterations. And the first one that was random the total reward is minus 470, but with Epsilon Greedy, the total reward went way up. And you can also plot it. It's rather, it's rather a simple plot, actually. It simply, i got to pull this up a little bit. It simply is a straight line plot. 
of the two iterations, where the first one had a reward of minus 470, and the second one, as you see, was much higher. So here's our summary table of the policy. And really, there was no change in the policy per se. There were changes here in state S9 and S2, but that was when we only sampled 1,000 the first time. This time, we sampled 5,000, but we also used Epsilon Greedy. So what did we do in this video? We described the Monte Carlo method, which is basically a resampling method. And we looked at, in our example, doing just that. 